So the question is, uh, Bobcat T190 track motor, what we've got is a short hub or a short nose uh, motor. And what happened is the hub section here has gone bad. You can see, well, maybe you can't see, but this hub section is destroyed. And the short nose was an earlier version and they upgraded that to a long nose. These were weaker. The long nose is a uh, better design, but if you upgrade from a short shaft or a short nose to a long nose, you would have to put a new sprocket on there to make up the difference to center it in your track there. But the good news is on the short nose is you can replace just this hub section. So let's say the rest of your motor is good. You can buy just a new hub section and bolt it onto your motor. So I got this one out of my scrap pile Ugh. and we're going to tear it down just to see how we get down to that nose section, how we would uh, replace that if I were going to do that. I am not going to replace it on this motor. Uh, again, this one's just spare parts. I keep a lot of motors in my scrap pile for spare parts. So we're going to start by disassembling the, um, the brake section. I got to remove all these bolts on this rear cap here. So these little um, concrete mixing trays are just awesome to throw all your parts in as you're tearing down components. I love these things. All right, got all the bolts removed. You can see that kind of sprung up because there is a Bellevue washer under here. Now that I got my plate off, I can remove my Bellevue washer, just take note of which way it's oriented. Um, and now, this is our brake piston. You can see it's threaded. You can thread a bolt in there and pull it out, but what I like to do is uh, just use a little air pressure in the brake port. pop the brake piston out just like that. Now, you saw I had a little bit of oil on top. I don't know how much oil was on top, but always replace this brake seal here. If oil gets on top of there, then your brakes can't release and that's how you destroy your brake disc. And now that I got the brake piston out, what I want to do is remove this brake housing. There's some more Allen head bolts inside of here. And I can also see that my seal that actually seals around the brake piston right here, um, it's kind of chewed up and it's kind of beat up. So uh, ideally you're going to want a whole entire seal kit when you, when you tear this down that you want to replace all these seals when you put it back together. brake housing had a roll pin on it so I kind of had to hammer that off and really I should have washed this motor because now I'm getting dirt all down inside of there but we're going to clean all these com components before we put it back together anyways you can see there's a little uh, square ring um, a lot of people call these o-rings but they're actually square cut. So it's, it's like a square ceiling ring is what we call it that uh, goes right down in there. This is our brake pack here. Now the brake pack, it's, it's like a clutch. It's made of mini disc and on the bottom here is our shims because we, we do have a spec on the thickness of this. But if we're just putting this back together and these brake discs don't look worn, you know, it's just like a clutch. You got an outer ring and an inner ring See, it's got the splines in the middle where the outer has the splines on the outside and none in the middle. So they sandwich all together and that's, that's basically what sets your brakes. If your brake pack is bad, then it's probably, it's just so expensive for these parts. It's probably better to get just a reman motor at that point. And so now what I'm going to do is just pull out my brake shaft right here. 
set it aside. There's also a bronze bushing in here that you want to inspect, and that's what our brake shaft slides up and down in. I just want to make sure there's no lips on it, no damage inside there. That one looks good. Just a little spacer inside there. All right, so now what I got to do is we're going to start taking off the distributor section. And these are our bigger bolts here and there. These are the most challenging ones to get out because they've been in there for so long. They're rusted and, you know, this is one I'm going to fight because this one's been sitting outside. It doesn't matter. Well, I guess on all machines are sitting outside, right? And they're really nasty. All these uh, Allen heads are just full of crud and rust. So I'm going to take a few minutes, try to get all these cleaned out, uh, get this fitting out of my way, and then we'll start backing all these bolts out. Well, I got these bolts cleaned up pretty good. Let's see if uh, see if we can get them to back out here. Oh yeah, there's that's promising. Awesome. Well, all those came out. Doesn't always happen that way. Alright, now we're going to try to get my distributor section popped off here. Okay, so when I say distributor section, this part right here is the distributor and there is seals down in there. So we just want to leave this distributor in place. Um, we have talked about the timing pin down inside there, that it could waller out, but uh, if your motor has good power, your tracks are even, you probably don't even have to worry about that. So technically I should tear this completely down since I would be putting this back together and clean all this. See, just taking the bolts out, I've got dirt everywhere and you can't let this dirt get back in the motor and into your hydraulic system. So really this should be a full tear down, clean, and then rebuild. So distributor section, um, again, here's another one of those square rings that we would call an o-ring but it's actually a square ring um, on this motor you would want to kind of mark the orientation um, i guess you don't really have to because i guess um, it doesn't matter which way the orientation goes on this but um, yeah because there's no ports or anything on that so you can mark it to put it back the same way you don't necessarily have to but might not be a bad idea all right, and then here is part of the rotating group. This is the uh, the lobes here, I guess, on the cam. And these are the pistons. So this would be your piston group. Now, these pistons all come out via hydraulic pressure through these holes. That's what pushes the pistons out. Oh, there comes one right now. See how it's coming out? And that's what pushes on the ramps, and that's what gives you your power. All your power for this motor is made in this tiny section right here. It's kind of amazing. All right, and that gets us down to our hub section. So this is the part that we would buy and replace on that motor. And since my hub section is bad, yeah, you can re... Mine's bad, so it's not rebuildable. It would cost you more to rebuild it than what you can buy it for. Here's a little split lock washer that holds that bearing into place. We got a little thrust washer underneath that, but none of this you're gonna have to take apart when you buy your hub section, but I'm just gonna throw them in there, keep them as spare parts. And then what we would do is if we were gonna replace these bearings, at this point, we can now press this shaft out of this section. But okay, we ordered a new section. Here it is. Let's throw it back together real quick. Again, there's another square seal in this section right here. Anyways, I'm not going to pop it out, but yes, there is another square section in there. 
This is where your dual cone seal is gonna be, right down in this section right here too. All right, put that back together. Of course, this is all gonna be clean. Holes have to be facing up because that's what uh, your distributor pushes against. Okay, my cam ring, how do you know which way it goes? Well, I guess it can go either way in this instance, but usually the uh, the square seal would be on the, the, the um, cam ring and one on the body, but in this case, it'll go in either direction. Okay. Again, as if we are assembling this, this is all perfectly clean, right? Put our uh, square seal back in our distributor's housing. Now we can just bolt that section back together. Brake spacer, our small square cut ring. Now we're gonna get our brake shaft put back into position here. Sometimes this can be tricky to find exactly There it goes. Now for our brake pack itself, we're gonna start with our shims. Shims down, and normally, I'm just gonna do this um, one at a time. You might have a couple extra outer rings. They will go on the shim side. And just one by one, I'm gonna build this up. So now all the grooves on our outer disc do need to be lined up. So just using my little putty knife here, I just take it and kind of just work all these discs into place. Try to make them as even as possible so that our brake housing will slide down over it without an issue. Okay, that looks good. Our brake housing. Now you will see the orientation of where the roll pins are. There's one here, one here. And don't forget this seal right here. This one's damaged, but it should be in your seal kit and you wanna replace that for your brake piston. Um, I'm not gonna replace it because this is not a full rebuild. Lining up my grooves here. Okay, that's probably the trickiest part of this whole process is lining up that brake pack and getting it back down on there. Again, my seal's busted here, so it's kind of going to get in my way. Let me just pop this little section out. There is washers for these bolts. Uh, mine kind of stayed in there, one popped out. 
just keep an eye on those washers when you take it apart or when you throw it in your bin. And again, we would torque those to spec. Brake piston, new seal. Very important, new seal. And make sure that the, uh, the, the surface here is very clean. There's a little bit of a burr inside of this one that I don't like, but hmm, that's kind of scary. And our Bellevue washer, the concave in, you know, the point facing the piston to the inside. Now we can just put our outer cover back on. <clears throat> Uh, there may be a gasket for this section right here. Um, usually it's a real thin, tight paper gasket. Um, this one actually has an O-ring on the cover out here on the outside, but the bigger and the larger motors might have a gasket, and that's really to keep dirt out, not oil in. Again, there should be no oil on top of this piston because if it gets in between the plate and the piston, you're basically hydrolocking your brake system and your brakes won't release. That's how drive motors go bad. So hopefully that gave you a little insight on how to tear this motor down and put it back together if you were just replacing the hub section out here. Um, if I were to do this for real, it would probably take me, I don't know, six hours probably just on the motor part just cleaning everything cleaning all the bolt heads cleaning all the threads you know all the dirt rust fittings i would be replacing no rings on my fittings these fittings i would actually be replacing um it, it just takes time you know take your time and do it right and you'll be successful in in putting this motor back together but you got to keep that contamination out of it that's that's the only reason it would take me long you know this is only 15 20 minutes tear down and put it back together but Again, hope that helps, puts a little insight on this motor. And even if you don't have a T190, it's probably interesting to see how these are done. No voodoo, no special stuff, nothing weird, nothing crazy. It's very simple to do. So any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.